Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, it is the 20th of March, 2024, and we are at 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. So whatever time zone you're in, uh, some are better than others at this time in the morning for us. And um, we, we're just looking forward to the Africa Watch. This is the Africa Watch on a Wednesday morning. And today we have Pastor Michael back in the house with us and from Kenya. So we're so excited to be able to hear what he has to say uh, because uh, your depth of knowledge of the word is so really wonderful. And we, we just know that you will give us what's on your heart and what uh, the Lord is speaking to you about. So we thank you for that. Um, thank you, God. Good. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, should I play the song now and then we, we might get yes. some more people on? That's always a way yes, to get great. people on. Yes, great. Yes. Pleasure. Pleasure. Great and pleasure. Well, it's definitely all about you, Jesus. Um, I had uh, a couple of scriptures that came in today. It was from Acts 16, verse 25 and 26, and it said, about a midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. So when you think of what the power of praise does, it can actually free us, not only spiritually, mentally, and, um, and physically, but um, it can actually make a difference to the people who are listening to the songs that we are singing. Thank you. So, Pastor Michael, I'll just pray and thank you for coming on and being our speaker today. And I just pray for God's guidance and for the Holy Spirit to lead us in this uh, time. And I just thank you for being able to, for every single person who's come online for the Africa Watch today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Joe, and thank you everyone for joining us on the Africa Watch. Uh, this is Africa Watch, and thank the Lord. Yes, it's true. Uh, the Lord has been gracious to us, and uh, thank you for the privilege to come to His presence. Psalm sixty-five, verse four. Psalm sixty-five, verse four. The Bible says, "Blessed is the man whom you choose, whom you cause to approach unto you." We shall, be, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your heart, even of your holy temple. It is always an awesome privilege for us to be in the presence of the, 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 the glorious God, the great God, the almighty Father, the God, of the creator of the whole universe, this amazing and wonderful Father, so great yet so loving God that it is, and it's such a privilege this morning uh, uh, for me to be called upon to, to share his word. And I believe that uh, the Lord will share uh, whatever he has in his heart with us, and we're going to take some time to pray. Uh, those who know me very well know me for one word I always say. I say that God has called me to serve, uh, yes, my generation, with Africa as being my Jerusalem. So for me, it is from Africa to the rest of the world. And that is my passion. That is my heartbeat. So it's a joy to be with you all this morning, particularly our brothers and our sisters from different parts of the world who have come to be part of these uh, calls this morning. I could see my beloved sisters on the call this morning and, and some of our brothers also joining us. May the Lord bless you all. I'm just going to say a word of prayer very quickly. And then uh, I believe whatever the Lord has for us this morning, I pray that he will put his word in my mouth, I share, and then we'll pray. We're going to pray for the continent of Africa, and we're going to pray for the rest of the world. So let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious, loving, faithful, holy, and wonderful Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for the privilege to come before your blessed and holy presence this morning. Thank you, Father, for some of us that have woken up just this early morning. It's already about 7 a.m. Some of us, the city is late night. Father, we are truly, tremendously grateful that you've brought us together through the use of this technology to be able to access your presence, 
and also be able to fellowship with one another. So, Lord, we commit our time together this morning before you have once again asking for your leading, your guidance, your direction. Blessed Father, thank you for the privilege of giving me your Lord uh, to, to share with your people this morning. And Lord, in the light of the word of Psalm 81, verse 10, your word said, Oh Lord, uh, you have brought us out of Egypt. You said we should open our mouth and you shall fill it. So Lord, this is what I'm just asking of you this morning. The Lord, as I open my mouth, oh God, to share with your people, Father, I pray that you fill my heart and fill my mouth with your holy word. That I will not speak, O oh God, of my own, a true the wisdom of man, but I will only speak as your Holy Spirit will give me utterance this morning. That all the praise and all the glory shall be to you and to you alone. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Amen. So this morning I I I I, I got reminded by Brother Edward uh, just about two days ago. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, thank you, thank you for reminding me on time. Uh, usually we just maybe just remind me, maybe uh, a couple of hours before they call us or something like that. But thank the Lord at least uh, he told me about this and I was lucky. Whatever happened, by the grace of God, I will be here and, and by God's grace, I'm going to be sharing. So I, of course, I, uh, of course, will naturally as a child of God, Go seek the face of the Lord. So, Father, so what is it that you want to talk about? Uh, and the thing that just came to my heart is just about the glory of the Lord. Uh, I'm going to be sharing from the book of Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verse 1 to 3, Isaiah chapter 60. We're going to read through. I was just going to be looking at how this God, our Father, seeks to be glorified among men on earth. That is the essence of what God is. Is the God that seeks his own glory. That's why it says that my glory will I not share with any man. That is one key thing that is not going to compromise with any human, with any mortal. So I want to start from the book of uh, uh, Isaiah. I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to be reading together. Uh, my favorite Bible version is the New King James Version. So pardon me this morning if that is not yours. Uh, let's just uh, use mine this morning. My favorite Bible version is um, the New Kingdom version. And I'm sharing on the screen from the book of Isaiah chapter 6. And we're just going to read together from the one. This experience of our uh, brother, the, king, uh, the, uh, the prophet Isaiah. And then we're going to see how it connects to verse number 3. Then we're going to read Isaiah 60. And then we take it from there. I uh, believe and I know, I believe and I know that the Lord our God will share whatever he has for us this morning quickly and then we can go spend some time to pray. Um, as you can see on the screen, um, we are reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1. And the word of the Lord says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And cried. And one cried to another and said, Holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. Verse 4. And the post of the door was shaking by the voice of him who cried out. Who cried out. Uh, by the voice of him cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. Now this is what the response of prophet Isaiah. He says, so I said, woe is me for I am undone. Because I am a man of clean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Yes, we're seeking the glory of the master's strategies. The Lord our God is the great God. The one who is the who, who desires that the old heart might be filled with his glory. I know we know that scripture, Apocalypse chapter 2, verse 14. It says, for the heart shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water cover the sea. This is the same prophecy here. 
that this uh, the angel were proclaiming before the Lord that the old ark is filled with the glory of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. In the book of Exodus, uh, there was a time that uh, that the, uh, the Moses was having this encounter with the Lord, and he said, "Lord, if you know that your presence is not going to go with us, don't even bother to take us from here." The Lord said, "I will show you my glory, and my presence will go with you." The glory of the Lord also connotes the presence of the Lord, because where God is, His glory is also expressed. Where the Lord is by his presence, the glory of the Lord is also expressed. So this morning, I believe the Lord wants to be glorified among men. He wants the whole heart to be filled, not just with part of his glory, but to be filled with the fullness of the glory of the Lord. So uh, how do we glorify the Lord? How do we seek to give him all the praise? Our Lord Jesus Christ exemplified that while he was here on earth, in that in virtually everything he was doing while he was here on earth, it was all for the purpose of bringing glory to the Father. In the book of Psalm chapter 50, another very important scripture, which I know that some of us are very, very familiar with, Psalm 50 from verse 15. The Lord says that in Psalm chapter 50, and I'm just going to read very quickly from verse 15 so that we now look at that very quickly and then we continue again from there. Psalm 50, verse 15, the word of the Lord says, He said, Call upon me. Okay, let me just read it from verse 14. He says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. I will set you free. You will bring me the glory. What am I trying to say this morning, people of God? The Lord desires to be glorified in every situation and circumstances of man. The Almighty God wants all his name to be glorified among men. And whenever we seek to bring him glory, we seek to attract his presence. The presence of the Lord, like I said earlier on, is glory. So where uh, that is what the prophet, that's what the prophet Isaiah saw. And he said, I am on God. I am a man of an unclean lips. How come, uh, 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 how can I say that I'm, be, uh, uh, I mean, I mean uh, experiencing the awesomeness of the presence of the Lord? The Lord God is a God who seeks to be glorified. That is why he says in that Psalm chapter 50, verse 15, he says, when there are challenges in life, all you need to do is to call on me. I will set you free. I will intervene, and there will be something that you must follow after that. When I deliver you, you give me the glory. Uh, whenever I read the book of Isaiah chapter 45, I always share, I think I've shared this thought a couple of times. I mean, I mean, to some of my friends uh, who have been uh, on some of the watches that I leave. Uh, in look, looking at that Isaiah 45, when the Lord was talking to Cyrus, it says that, it says, see unto Cyrus, let me put it on the screen so that we read it directly from that book of Isaiah 45, from verse 1 to 3. And God saying that he is holding him by his right hand. Isaiah chapter 45. All is because the Lord wants to be glorified. He does not want to share his glory with any man. In Isaiah chapter 45, from verse 1 to 3, very quickly, let's look at that this morning. And I pray that the Lord our God will bring blessed circumstances around us and even to the, to the whole earth and to every part of the earth, which seems now, we may be saying now, there are some challenges, there are some shaking. All we need to do is to invite God, say, God, come and be glorified. Come and be glorified. In Isaiah 45, from verse 1, it says, God says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. Whenever I get to this verse of scripture, I'm like, God, why will you hold a man by his right hand? Why will you hold a hand? Because majority of mankind, majority of all of us, when I say mankind, are both um, uh, masculine and feminine, we are all, majority are right-handed people. Majority of people are right. Of course, we know people who are left-handed, but they are in the minority. So most people are right-handed people. Over, I mean, 
large, large percentage of, of human population were all right-handed. But now look at God now taking this man Cyrus to, on a journey. The first thing God says that to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. God is saying, number one, I am holding you, Cyrus, by your right hand. In other words, you know, when you are held by your right hand, that hand is incapacitated, so to say. That right hand is already made ineffective because someone is already holding it. So that's why the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. It says in the book of Exodus chapter 14, you say, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the enemy you see today, you shall see them no more. He said, for the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So God says to, to Cyrus this morning, he said, I'm holding you by your right hand, number one. So when your right hand is held, of course, you know that that means that the place of your strength is already taken over by God. Because in that Psalm 50, verse 15 that we read, he wants to take the glory. He wants to be glorified in our life, in our situation, our circumstances. Now, the first thing he did is he held Cyrus by his right hand and announced that to subdue nations before him. Wow. So God is going to hold Cyrus's right hand and he's going to go to war on behalf of Cyrus. He's going to go to war. What is he going to do? He goes to war on behalf of Cyrus, subdue nations before him, lose the armors of king, open before Cyrus, the double doors that will never be shut again. Look at verse 2 again. I will go before you. Wow. An amazing God to work with. This is an amazing God to work with. A God who will hold me by my own human, very limited, very weak hands, and then fight the battle on my behalf, open doors on my behalf, make the crooked places to be straightened, break in pieces the gates of bronze, and cut the battle of pine asunder. And look at verse 3. And I will give him, give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Now look at that. That you may know that I, the Lord, will call you by your name. I am the God of Israel. Wow. That you may know that you may come to the reality of the fact that the God of the heavens are there. I am the one who does the battle. I am the one who fights on your behalf. I am the one who has what it takes to obtain victory and hand that and it over to you on a platter of gold. Amazing God. So when he holds up by our right hand, he goes ahead of us. He fights the battle on our behalf. He obtains the victory and then he gives it to us on the platter of gold. That's what he said in the book of in the book of Psalm chapter 44, when he talks about the children of Israel, how they are delivered from uh from Egypt. Psalm that Psalm 44, very interesting scripture. Uh, as we pray this morning, I would like us to pray uh shortly. Um, the Lord was letting Israel know. Let me quickly, quickly, quickly look at that. We are, let's look at that as we begin to pray. That we know to seek the glory of the Lord, to seek that God may be glorified. In our situation, in our circumstances, in our nation, in the places God has called us to serve. Once we seek his glory, the name of the Lord will be praised. In Psalm chapter 44, look at what the Lord is saying in Psalm 44 this morning. It is very popular scripture. Psalm 44 verse 1, the word of the Lord says, that We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In the days of old, you drove out the nation with your hand. Let's look at that. That capital Y is at the hand of God. Then you planted them, but then you planted, then you planted the people of Israel. You afflicted the peoples and cast them out. Now look at verse 3, very important. For they did not gain the possession of the land by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm. And the light of your countenance, because you favor them. I pray this morning that the Lord God of the heavens and the earth may favor every single one of us that is hearing the voice of the Lord this morning. He says, because you favor them. It was not their right hand. It was not the nation of Israel that went to war to fight. It was God who fought on their behalf. He was the one who was seeking that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord may be seen among his own people. God seeks to be glorified among men. 
God seek to be glorified. In fact, the ultimate agenda of God is that the earth may be filled, like Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14 says, that the earth may be filled with the knowledge, with the knowledge. God people letting people, God's people know that the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. So, beloved, this morning, I don't know the situation and circumstances that God uh, that you're going through. Why don't you step back and allow God to be the one to take the lead? Once we learn to step behind the Lord, we will make less mistakes. When we learn to allow the Lord to take over in every situation and circumstances, beloved, the, the battle becomes so easy for us. Those children that seem to be wayward, that family situation that seems to be so complicated, that marriage that became so challenging, just stand behind the Lord like in the book of Isaiah 45. Allow the Lord to take the lead. Allow him to guide you and direct you. Beloved, you will sing a song of joy, of, of rejoicing eventually. When we allow the Lord to take the lead, I tell you, he never loses any battle. No, 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 no. Because the Bible said in Psalm 24, verse 1, that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and everyone that dwells in it. Yes, God is still seeking to be glorified among men. Irrespective of what the devil thinks he's doing, God is the one who is, is the God of the whole universe. And he reigns as God over this universe. So I don't know, um, as you're listening to this morning, that each, each, each and every one of us that is on this call this morning, I believe the Lord is saying something to each of us this morning. Would you allow me to hold you by your right hand? That arm of yours that you think is strong enough to fight, would you just hand it over to me? Let go of your own human strength. Allow me to take charge and you will see that you will laugh last. Allow me to be the one to take the lead, like he said to Cyrus. He said, I will go before you. I will do the battle. I will do the fighting. And I will hand you the victory on the platter of gold. Many a times, one of the reasons why we have robbed ourselves of big testimonies and, 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 and victory is because we think that we know how to do it. And many of the time we get in the way of the Lord. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, it says, For the Spirit of the Lord, Genesis 3, it says, For the Spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man. The Spirit of God will not going to be struggling with you. Once he asks you to step back, you're not going to step back. He says, okay, all right then. Then you know how to do it. Okay, you go ahead and do it your own way. He's not going to struggle with you. But each time you are consciously telling the Lord, Lord, I don't even know how to go about this journey. I don't even know how to fight this battle. Is it? Does it have to do with, with, the, with the ministry God has committed to hand? Does it have to do with the strategy of warfare, spiritual warfare? Does it have to do with any situation and circumstances that we may be dealing with. All we need to do is to learn to step back and let him take the lead. I beloved, beloved, I tell you, whenever we begin to lead that as a lifetime, uh, was it last year? Like yeah, last year, a couple of some of the brethren that we pray together, we read a book together, a book, um, a book, a uh, very, very interesting book where we were learning how to, to, to walk behind the Lord and allow God to take the lead in all we do. It was an amazing book. It was an amazing experience that actually transformed even me, myself. Even though I was the one teaching and trying to explain the book and trying to, uh, I mean, teach uh, the people of God. It was a life-transforming uh, experience for me just to learn to stand behind the Lord and allow him to take the lead. In Psalm 32, verse 8, it says, I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will guide you. Wow. All is because he wants to be honored and glorified in every situation and circumstances of our life. I want to pray that uh, even though our world may appear to be in turmoil, yeah, they may appear as if, oh, what is going on in the nation of Israel? There's challenges over there. What is happening in the nation of, 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 of in, 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 in the western part of the world? There's so many things we're hearing. Uh, what is happening in, in Europe? Where it's seen as if there's no revival. What is happening in Africa? There seems to be uh, some little bit of revival coming up, but we still have our own, uh, um, I mean, uh, big chunks of challenges. Yes, all of this may appear to be so, but let's remember, there's one key thing that I want us to remember this morning, 
the almighty God seeks his own glory among men. I mean, we be the instrument that will bring him the glory. Like our Lord Jesus Christ did. All through his earthly ministry, everything is just desire is to bring glory to the name of the Father. I pray this morning that the Lord will help us to be instruments in the hand of the Most High God that bring glory to the name of the Lord. I love what Habakkuk says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. That's why I'm going to round up this morning and I'm going to pray. And so that as each and every one of us listen to the word, what the Lord is saying this morning, I pray that we can be able to apply it into relevant aspect of our life that God wants this scripture uh, to, to be applied. Let's look at that last scripture this morning, Habakkuk chapter 2, very popular scripture that we are all very familiar with. I know this is a watchman. And I know that we are all very familiar with this uh, scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's just read it, of course, from verse number 1. He said, I will stand my watch. I will wait my watch and set myself on the rampart. And I will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered and said, and I want us to look at that process. The man of God said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to stand my watch. I just want to wait and watch to see what is it that God is going to say to me. This is where many of us miss it. Whenever there's life challenges, whenever there are issues that even, that even assignment that God has given to us, we are not that patient enough to wait and watch to see what the Lord is going to say. We grab our weapon of war. We hold it by our right hand. We immediately go to war. But that's not what God wanted, probably. Maybe all God wanted is for us to step back, just wait and watch and hear what God is going to say. In that difficult marriage, in that difficult situation and circumstances, in that situation that we are managing, in ministry, in our, in, in our nation, can we watch to see what he will say so that he can take the lead and we walk behind him. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, that the sons of God. I pray this morning, uh, God's own people, may the Lord be honored in our life. May the Lord be glorified in our family. May the Lord be honored in our nations and the nations of the earth that he has called us to serve. May the glory of the Lord, as it says in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 14, said the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. May we be the instrument that God is going to use to bring glory and honor to his name. Let's remember that Psalm 50, verse 15 again. It says, call on me, I will deliver you. You will bring me the glory. This is the word of the Lord this morning. I'm going to ask one of us to receive the word. And then we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. I just, I'm going to ask us to take a couple of prayer. Uh, just one or two prayer points that we're going to pray. Of course, uh, part of me this morning to, to start with, with the Jerusalem that God has given us, which is the continent of Africa. That the Lord will be honored and glorified. Particularly in the life of the youth of this continent. Our youth in, Af in, in on the continent of Africa, they say there is a trend among the youth of Africa, rec this recent trend. Well, of course, I know that this is also uh, global, um, uh, but I really have a body this morning, and the Lord will, uh, will help us to pray uh, that he will rule in the heart and the mind of the youth of our continent, Africa. Uh, Mama Jovanis, uh, Dr. Jovanis, uh, are you with us this morning, Mom? Are you able to unmute um, 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 your... Your screen yet, ma'am? Dr. Juvenis, Baba? Yeah, God bless uh, yeah. you, can, can you kindly help us to receive the word? And then I will come back to ask us to be in prayer. Kindly help us receive this word, ma'am. Lord God, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you, Lord, for considering us as your children accepting us lord you have adopted us to be your children to know you and to follow you we want to thank you lord for the opportunities you give us even on this platform to learn from you 
And Lord God, we pray that we will be those who will behold your glory and who will always watch for your glory, to be led by your glory. Lord God, the way Moses and the Israelites used to wait for the cloud to lift, for them to break camp, and for the cloud to settle, for them to, to camp again. We pray, Lord, that we will look out for your guiding. We will watch for you, Lord. We will wait for you. We pray, Lord, that you will hold our right hand and strengthen us and restrain us where we are going astray. And you strengthen us where you want us to move, where you want us to act. Lord God, we pray that we will be people who will be trustworthy, who will be role models, who will go out, Lord, to, to be your witnesses and minister to souls, Lord. We pray that we will wait for your guidance. We will look for your wisdom, for your knowledge. That We pray, Lord, that you will guide us in all that we will do. And Lord God, we also pray that you will guide Israel as you have used Israel as an example to set before us. You have done all your covenants with Israel. You have made your promises to Israel so that we can learn from what you have done to them. We pray, Lord, that they will not forget what you did for, to their forefathers, but they will look to you to know that you are the Lord who did great things who delivered them from the house of bondage, and you brought them to the land of their inheritance. So, Lord God, we pray that you will lead these children who, have, who did not see those things you did, but they were told that they will look to you for guidance, that they will wait for your glory, that they will wait for you to hold their right hand and to lead them into battle, to lead them to do marvelous things, Lord. We also pray for our nations that you will lead our leaders that they'll come to know you they'll come to honor you that they will formulate policies that align with your word and they look for your glory that whatever they do will be for your glory whatever they plan lord will be for the good of the people and the people will come to know you and honor you we pray that our nations the nations of everybody represented on this platform and those who have not they turned up, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will make our nations, ship nations, that will know you and honor you. And we'll always look to you, Lord, for guidance, for protection, for provision, that we'll not devise our own means, but we'll look to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, ma'am. I want to share my screen uh, very quickly. I would like us to just worship the Lord a couple of minutes with this very short song, just less than five. I'm going to play uh, less than five minutes. Uh, this song, I just, uh, the Spirit of God just break it to my heart and I feel that uh, it's just, uh, what we just want to worship the Lord with that song and then we will come back and then <clears throat> we'll come back and, and continue in prayer. Let's listen to this song in a minute. Uh, Amen and amen and amen. The key point uh, in this song this morning is, my soul will wait on you. And this is where I believe that uh, I want us to start with that this morning. Uh, like uh, like the Abacoc said, in Abacoc, Abacoc said, I will wait to see. I will wait to hear. Men, we are wired to be in a hurry. We are wired to be reactional. When life, situation, and circumstances comes up, we are we, we are naturally wired to con, to gonna what do I do? How do I respond to this? Um, but I learned recently some of the so a few uh, things that I put as acronym for myself. Uh, I, I I learned it from a, a man of God, and I added one P to it. I call it Papa P A R P A P A R P A. From him, I learned it to be P A R. A, but uh, I put P in the middle, P-A-R-P-P, P-A-R-P-A is an acronym. And the first P there talks about pause, pause. It's so difficult for us when we come into life and circumstances to learn to pause, to just have a hold on yourself. That is what is pausing, just head on to yourself. 
let that so wait. Just take a pause. That's the first P. Then the, sec the, the, the first A, uh, following after the first P, is absorb. Pause and absorb. If we don't pause and we are reactional, now, we will not be able to have the right perspective of the situation. Rather, what we are going to have is perception. And there's a lot of difference between perspective and perception. So if you can be able to pause, absorb, then we can now reflect. When we reflect, then we can be able to, what? The, 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 the thought uh, uh, um, uh, letter there is R, which is reflect. The first is pause. The second is absorb, then reflect. Then when we reflect, we will now be able to pray. Because now when we pause, we absorb and reflect, we get the right perspective of the situation. In that situation, we will have allowed the Lord to take the lead and then we we'll pray. Then before we get to the last A, which is what? Acting, taking action. So it is P A R P A. I like us to pay for pray for one another this morning. The first prize I wanted to pray for you, Lord. Will you teach me to learn to wait on you? Teach me to learn to be sensitive to the voice of your Holy Spirit, whatever the situation may be, whatever the circumstances may be. I want my life to bring you the glory, but He knows how He wants to be glorified in that situation. But when we don't know how to cultivate the habit of waiting on Him. Being able to have a hold onto ourselves is going to be difficult for us to bring in the glory. I'd like every one of us to omit this morning and say, Father, teach me to learn how to wait on you. Like the songwriter wrote that song we just listened to, say, Lord, my soul will wait on you. My soul will wait on you. And, and this Abacal says, I will watch and I will wait on my tower to see what, I, what is he going to say. In Psalm 32, he say, I will instruct you. So he's not going to instruct you when you're not waiting. If you don't wait to tarry in his presence, you can miss a lot of important instruction that the Lord wants to give to us. Can we, can we all of you this morning? I just go before the Lord, teach me to wait. Teach me to teach me how to wait on you. I want to learn how to do it. I would like to cultivate a lifestyle of learning to wait on the Lord, that you may take the lead in all that I do. Let's all of me this morning and say, Father, I just want you to teach me, Lord, how to learn to wait on you. Can we all unmute and take this fresh prayer point for one another this morning? Lord, I want to learn it. Will you teach me how to learn to wait on you? Teach me how to pause. Teach me how to learn to absorb. Teach me how to learn to get the right perspective for situation, even before I pray. Bible says in the book of James that some of them, they pray, but they prayed amiss because they didn't even wait to know what God want them to do. So let's all commit and say, Lord, teach me to learn how to teach wait. Teach me to learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn. Wait to oh, learn to listen to the Lord. Oh, God, wait to listen to the Lord. Oh, God, in our life, to learn to wait. Teach us to learn to wait. Teach us to learn to wait. I know it is not natural for us to men. Although we are reactional, we are naturally wired to be rational. We are naturally wired to not to take action. Even when we don't have the right aspect. Will you teach us to wait? Teach us to learn how to wait on you. Teach us to learn to cultivate the lifestyle of power, of forcing, of absorbing the right of my father assessment of situation, even before we begin to pray. Then before we now take we want our life to bring you all the glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' almighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We're going to pray this morning. As I said, um, we're going to pray. Uh, like I said, I, I felt that um, one of the things God uh, gave me a burden of us 
this morning is for us to pray for the youths of the continent of Africa. Um, um, and by virtue of that, pray for the youths all around the world. Many of us, I have, have some of us on the call this morning, uh, we, we have young adult children. Uh, and when you see what our young adults, even some of them that are from Christian homes, some children that we raised in the ways of the Lord, if you make a mistake of getting to their Instagram pages, you go into their TikTok, when you see you, you, you'll be weeping. What children of believers are doing. So I want us to pray this morning for these youths that the Almighty God will arrest mm -hmm. their hearts. I want us to cry to the Lord for the youths in every part of the earth. God needs them because they are people of strength. God needs them because they are people of wisdom. They are people of technology. But we need this army to be army who are instruments of the glory of God. We know this morning, God wants to be glorified. But a mad majority of these youth today, they are sold out for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I would like us to cry to the Lord this morning. In the light of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1, Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord, and like the rivers of water, he, God, will turn it to where he wills. Allow us to begin to dedicate the heart of youth in Africa, in Europe, in the Americas, in the part of the Father, take over the heart of our youth. Use them to your own glory. Lord, reveal yourself to them in their dream. Let them have Damascus experiences. Father, we pray for our youth. So let's all amen and let's just cry to the Lord this morning. Let's cry and wail before the Lord. Lord, our cry this morning, I cry over the youth, oh God, youth on the continent of Africa, youth in Europe. Oh, yes, we cry for the youth, oh God. Oh, thank God for the new week. Oh, oh Lord, we just want to thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we can go in two directions. We cry to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Let us go so ready to get up. We pray for the youth every youth for the continent of Africa. Our youth, God, all of this. We pray for the youth of the world. Thank you, God. 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 Father, we pray for the youth of this continent. The Lord, you deliver them from drug addiction, from fashion, from the ways of error. Lord, our Father, we pray for our youth of God in Europe, for the youth of God in America. Oh Lord, we pray for the youth of God that some of us are here, our parents of God. We pray for us. Will you rule and reign in the heart of our youth? Rule and reign in the heart of our youth. Of our own generation. Lord, bring them back to you. Bring them back to you. So let them be instruments of your glory. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray that the hands of the enemy will be removed from their heart, from their mind, in the name of Jesus. And you will reign in their heart, O oh God. You will reign in the heart of the youth of our generation. We reign in the heart yes. of, the of the continent of Africa. Father yes. God, we pray that you root, you root, oh God, in the heart of the youth of the euro, in the mighty name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Our Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us a parable. Uh, he was talking about the parable of the tears. He says, uh, uh, a good man uh, planted a good seed. Then all of a sudden, there appear to be tears. I mean, what we call weeds among the mm -hmm. among the weeds among the good farm. And then the Lord says, "The enemy has done this." He said, "The enemy has done this." So what are we going to do? The Bible said in Matthew chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. Matthew fifteen thirteen says, "Whatever plant that is not planted by my heavenly Father." shall be uprooted. I would like us to still pray for the youth this morning. That every ideology that is not God birth, that yeah. is not birth from God. Every every thought, every lifestyle. Recently I saw the Instagram pray page of uh a, 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 a child of a of a man of God. The child of a man of God. I have to call another intercessor. Come 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 and see what I saw. Look at this. This is the child of a child of a man of God. We were all, we were both wailing before the Lord. 
This is it. And these are children. Uh, uh, please, these are children that are raised in the way of the Lord. The yeah. parents, they are not, it's not as if they are not taught. So some, I know there are some households where the parent did not teach the children. They didn't raise them appropriately. But there are families that they are godly parents. The parent raised them in the ways of the Lord, taught them, have devotion, pray over them every morning. Yet, there's this satanic tear. The plant, the weed, the devil has planted in the mind of these children that may want them to turn their back to the Lord and live a life. So we're going to come against those plants, those thoughts, those ideologies from the pit of hell. Because the Lord will uproot them from the heart and the mind of the youths of our generation, particularly children of believers. Lord, this, 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 this rebellion against the ways of the Lord among children of believers. Father, we are coming against it this morning. The Bible said in Matthew 15, verse 13, that whatever is not planted by my heavenly Father shall be approved. Let's all unmute again this morning. Let's all unmute and begin to pray for our believing children. Our children shall serve the Lord. Like Joshua said, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will yes. serve the Lord. Our yes. children will serve the Lord. Our children will yes. not be children of Belial. Let's yes. lift up our hands and pray to the yes. Lord this morning. Concerning yes. our youth, Lord, those who have ideas, children, we bring a child up in the way that you, that you all around the world, the continent of Africa, particularly children of believers, we pray for our God. All of this desire, all of these ideas, wonder where these ideas are coming from. Children are children against God. All those rebellious spirits, Lord, particularly rebellion against the Lord, rebellion against the Word of God, we pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Lord, deliver the youth, O oh God, deliver children of believers, the mighty Lord, deliver them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Now we go to now. Let's plant into the heart and the mind of our children that the love for the Lord. That the Lord will give them. They, number one, we're going to pray that prayer to all. They will have their own Damascus experiences. Uh, mm. this, uh, was, uh, last week, Saturday, um, uh, Auntie Beatrice was there. We were studying on, uh, we were studying on uh, uh, that act of the nine experience of Saul of Tarsus. Mm. And he experienced the Lord in, on his Damascus experience. And I said that, I said, the Damascus experience is a place of integration. Saul of Tarsus never knew that what he was doing was wrong. He thought it was just, uh, he was being zealous uh, for Judaism, not knowing that he was actually uh, persecuting the body of Christ. But mm. at, the, at, the, at his Damascus experience, the Lord connected him to the essence of his calling. It was a place of integration to the ultimate purpose of God for his life and destiny. Paul was raised to become an apostle of advancement of the purpose of God. It was the, the it was that Damascus experience that was the place of integration in, in, of connection into that purpose of God. I want us to pray for our children. All you turn around the world, Father, let them begin to have their own Damascus experiences that will bring about their life transforming transformation that will bring them into synchrony to your purpose for their life. Let's begin to cry out to God Damascus experience for our children, for our youths all around the world. Father, let them encounter you, O oh God. In their rebellion, let them encounter you. In their waywardness, let them encounter you. Lord, in their, in, 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 in their mind of, of turning their back to you, Father, bring them 
into their demarks. Let's quickly close that as a round of this morning. Father, these are hard cry, oh God, this morning for all yes. children, especially yes. children of yes. believers, yes. 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 to have them to give to God. So Lord, the place of influence, the agenda of God for their life. Oh God, Abba Father, God, give our children of God more that in their waywardness they may encounter you. Their rebelliousness that they may encounter you, Lord, in the ways of God that they are throwing their heart against you. Father, in the name of Jesus, that they may experience your love. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. All praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. Let me round up this morning. Our time is fast spent. Let me round up this morning uh, and then we will close our time together. Our dear Father, Lord of the heavens and the earth, we want to thank you this morning. You said that you want to ask to hope up. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for this time, oh Lord, and for your word that you sent to us. Our power, Father, we pray, Lord, you please help us, Lord, especially help, Lord, our children of God, children of believers. They may have divine Damascus experiences. Now bring them, O oh God, to the knowledge of the fruits of your word. And so, Father, we thank you this morning for the word you've shared with us. We pray for grace to walk in the light of the truth of the same. And Lord, that we may experience your glory and your grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And may I say, may the Lord God bless you and may the Lord God keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Lord grant you this shalom now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Over to you, Sister Jo. God bless amen. you. Wow, amen. Wow, yes, thank you. It reminded me of Psalm uh, 46, verse 10, um, which says about, um, be still and know that I am God, and I will be honored by every nation, and I will be honored throughout the world. And as I was told um, in Hernhut by Caroline Hyde the one time, that be still actually means to let go and let God. So that's what you're saying to us is let, let God lead and we will get the victory through that. So thank you so much, Pastor Michael, for um, your word today and uh, for everybody who's come on the call. Um, I know Beatrice has had to go because she's a part of this um, conference in Uganda and in Tebi. And so um, we, we, we just pray a blessing upon that Africa House of Prayer conference. I think it's the 32nd one that they've had. And so, Lord, we, we just lift them up to you and we just pray that whatever they are guided to speak on, that it will be of importance to you, Lord, that they will have waited on you and they will have been able to um, lead people in a wonderful way at that conference. So, um, Lord, we, we thank, for, uh, thank all the nations who've come on board today to pray and for being able to just pray from our hearts for our children and for them to remember what they were taught even in the past and, and um, stick with it and to do that. So, Lord, we just lift up this day to you. Some of us are just about to go into the full day um, and we have some rain here. So that's a blessing as well for us uh, in this part of, of Africa. So I just say thank you for this uh, time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just remembering for the Global Watch that um, later on we have the uh, uh, Israel, Israel Watch, which is really good. And we will also have a briefing after that. So. Wow, we are so blessed with all the things we can come to. Right, thank you, everybody. We'd like to unmute and shalom, 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye